Hello, patrons and possibly the worlds. Um, in this episode of How Sienna is a Crazy Person, I'm going to really quickly show you the amount of work that I did to find data for this little area here and this little area here. So these are called leading edge vortices and I wanted to have significant numbers to draw these with. I had some data I could put there like the velocity and max velocity of this bird, but it didn't seem like a, a good fit for it because it's more about like lift. So I knew I had this cool equation here for calculating lift, but I practiced drawing with this and I didn't like it. It just wasn't going to make a gradient that I liked. So I wanted to create some numerical values that are easier to play with. And so I wanted to calculate lift for my three birds, my yellow warbler, tree swallow, and short-eared owl, and also the minimum velocity that they would need to fly to sustain that lift. So just as a preamble to this is these drawings are drawn with morphometric data about how the shape of their wings and their body size relates to their flight style and flight capacity and also their ecological niche. So you have things like wing area, wing span, um, wing pointedness, and body mass, among some other things. The main things that are important here is you have the body mass. This here is the weight when you multiply them with the body mass times gravity. And this is what the lift has to, um, equal, to be equal or greater to to keep the bird aloft. It has to be equal to or greater than this number. And then this is the wing area. And as you see with these three birds, the weight increases as does the wing area. And then you wanna see how these factors contribute to the uh, lift force and the minimum velocity to stay aloft. So I calculated this equation here, just so you know what it is, the lift force equals the angle of attack times the air pressure, um, which changes by altitude, but we're gonna be using the standard air pressure at like sea level, times velocity squared multiplied by the wing area. And if you don't have the velocity, you can start by calculating what the minimum velocity is to keep that bird aloft by just switching around the equation. And so you get the square, you square root that velocity and you square root the rest of it. Um, and then you'll get the minimum velocity for each bird to stay aloft. So I calculated it and found these values. So the minimum velocity for a yellow warbler to stay aloft is just under six meters per second. It's just under seven meters per second for a tree swallow and just over eight meters per second for a short-eared owl. And you can see how the, um, the mass increases and their weight. So 0.1, almost 0.2, and then here we have 3.43. So you're seeing the scaling. This is, um, you actually would talk about this as an allometric relationship, which is how the minimum velocity scales relative to the mass of the bird. And then we have the, right here, I have the minimum lift. So this is the lift force um, that'd be generated from this bird given its wing area and body mass and um, if it's flying at its minimum velocity. So at its minimum velocity, it's about 0.1 newtons. For the tree swallow, it's about 0.2 newtons. And for the short-eared owl, at its minimum velocity, it's almost five newtons. So here again, we're seeing that allometric relationship between their body size and their lift force. And of course, the wing area is contributing really greatly to this. And then I also have the max here for these two guys. So this one I have calculated the max velocity of the tree swallow, 8.32 meters per second, and it came out with about almost 0.3 newtons. Um, I don't know what the max velocity of a yellow warbler is, but I just wanted to see how it would compare if it was flying at the max velocity of a tree swallow, and it's 0.21. So this is a really clear relationship, and for me, it really helped me walk through it so that I actually understand the relationship between their body mass, so the allometric relationship to um, flight velocity and lift force, and also how their wing shape is contributing, so wing area. And you can actually get more wing area uh, while having different shapes. You can talk to the albatross about that. Um, and then this was just for fun. I showed this to my partner, L, and I'm dealing with the tree swallow here, and they couldn't help make the reference to Monty Python asking, well, what is the uh, minimum velocity or lift force of a tree swallow while carrying a coconut? Um, so, I decided to calculate it. So we have the mass of a coconut and the mass of the swallow, and this is the weight, 11.96 newtons. So 
it needs to be able to with either with a combination of its wing area and flapping its wings generate enough force to lift this much weight and so the lift force required which i calculated over here is 17.25 newtons and the minimum velocity is 65 meters per second this right here is what really tells you it's totally impossible because the max velocity is 8.32 meters per second. They also have a wing beat frequency of 11.54. I think they would need to just about double their wing beat frequency to have any hope of reaching this speed, but they're not physiologically capable of doing that um, because of the lactic acid build, that it builds up. So they're, they're, they're physically incapable of doing this. Um, the only way that a bird could accomplish this is if they really, really, really needed to for their life to carry things like coconuts, they would have to slowly evolve over a long time the ability to carry more and more mass, which you would see um, them change their wing shape and their wing area. And that is how you can see like phylogenetic relationships where you see, um, what do they call it? Ecomorph. So you'll see ecomorphs, which is basically like the You'll see different species having similar body plans for their ecological niche. And so you might, if you really had to have a tree swallow that carried heavier things, it would more and more resemble other birds that have to carry things. Birds that have to carry things are, are birds like hawks and eagles and osprey. They have to carry prey. Um, and so with those guys, you're going to see a much larger wing area and wingspan. This is the last thing I'm going to say. This tree swallow hasn't evolved the capacity to carry heavy things because it doesn't need to. It's, it doesn't eat heavy things. It doesn't have to carry heavy prey. It doesn't have to carry heavy young. Um, it's just not required for its ecological niche. So this guy, if you remember, eats insects on the, on the wing. It's an aerial insectivore. Tiny little moths fly really fast, eat little things. Um, so yeah, this guy would never have any reason to develop the capacity to carry a coconut. <laughs> so there you have it. Scientifically resolved. Swallows do not help coconuts migrate. You're welcome. Bye. Real quick final note, um, the result of all this work comes to these three numbers, which I'll be using to draw these leading edge vortices. So this much work, probably three hours um, for three numbers. Totally worth it because now I feel like this data fits. It tells a story it makes sense. This is its new home. I'm happy with it. Totally worth it.